Hello, my name's Bev and I'm the author of the book Please Eat, A Mother's Struggle to Free Her Teenage Son from Anorexia, which describes our family's battle with the deadly eating disorder, anorexia nervosa, which my teenage son Ben developed back in 2009 when he was just 15 years old. Welcome to my blog posts from June 2011. And they kick off with a couple of posts from the 2nd and 3rd of June, which look at another issue that parents of young people with eating disorders face. What on earth should you do when your child comes down with a tummy bug or something like that? But a tummy bug especially, because if they're being sick and they've got diarrhoea, then they're losing calories and potentially losing weight. It can be can be dangerous. It can be the difference between recovery and a mini or full on relapse. And it's something that obviously wouldn't happen with a so called normal young person. If they had a tummy bug, you would just get them through it like any, you know, any illness, like a bad cold or whatever. But with an eating disorder, it's very different. And this first post from the 2nd of June 2011 is called Keeping the Bugs at Bay. It's just what we could do without in our household. My husband has got a tummy bug and I'm dreading Ben catching it. This is one of the reasons why it's so not okay for Ben to remain at his current low weight without going any higher. I know from having talked to other eating disorder parents that all it can take is just one sickness and diarrhoea bug and ping their child is back in the land of the unhealthy weight range or even lower. It just goes to show that weight recovery at this too low level is so very fragile and it's vital that we reach somewhere that's far more solid with sufficient leeway either side. So whatever happens, be it a sickness bug, a sporty week, a holiday, school dinners, a weekend with friends, fending for themselves, going to university, whatever, it's vital that our children are sufficiently weight restored and metabolically back on track to be able to cope with blips and dips. And I don't want Ben to have to relapse before our treatment team accept that Yes, weight normalisation for Ben is higher than they originally pitched it. And the next post is from Friday the 3rd of June, the next day, and it's called Impressed with Ben's Perseverance. Despite feeling grotty and losing his appetite, I have been incredibly impressed by the way Ben is ploughing on with his usual eating regime. So much so that I gave him extra points on our contracts yesterday. So far, he hasn't been sick, etc. So what's going into his body is staying there. Fingers crossed things won't get any worse. I don't know about you, but in the good old days, before anorexia reared its ugly head, the first thing that came into my mind when Ben fell sick was... Oh, poor thing, what can I do to make it better, etc, etc. With an eating disorder, the first thing that comes into your mind is, how am I going to keep my child eating through the duration? What will we do if they lose weight and catapult back into the land of eating disorders? Feeling sorry for them comes second. In an hour's time, we'll be with the psychiatrist. I did suggest to Ben that because he doesn't feel too well, he stays at home, but he's keen to go. In the bad old days of high anorexia, I'd have got him to cams come hell or high water, but these days it's not so important. Hopefully the psychiatrist read the letter I left with the receptionist, and I wonder what her reaction will be. I am crossing my fingers and toes that she will back me on the evidence-based treatment information I am relaying to Ben. Whichever way, she does tend to be very skilled at keeping a good balance between what messages are being said, so any triangulation is eliminated or kept to a minimum. And we all know how much the eating disorder loves triangulation between treatment team and carers. So watch 
this space. And that's the end of that second blog post. You can tell that I'm relieved that the psychiatrist is back from her break and will be seeing her rather than the um, CAMS nurse, her assistant, because um, the psychiatrist was much more tactful and careful with what she did and did not say, which um, translated as being much more helpful to, to Ben with his recovery. And also Ben got on really well with her. They, they just really hit it off together and that in itself is a really good thing and once she took me on board as well and was happy to accept me as part of the solution rather than part of the problem um, things improved on that that side too so that's the end of those two posts and thank you for listening You'll find a link below to my blog and you'll also find a link to my website where you can download free PDFs of my blog and also a link to Amazon where you can buy a copy of my book.